Hi, my name is Wendy Olson and I work at the University of Manchester where we're introducing flipping the classroom and how to flip in particular a quantitatively focused classroom or an enriched classroom of sociology or politics that has quantitative data in the actual teaching. And flipping it means that you would use very different lecturing methods from the usual. So the aim of this video is to show how you would actually manage and prepare for flipping your lecture. It's a really exciting method that uses active learning on the student's part. So instead of being a teacher that delivers the material, you become someone who's energized and who's ready to go into the classroom and find out how the students are doing in their learning. So it's almost that your role becomes monitoring and facilitating the student's learning. But I think there's some preparation you have to do in order to flip your classroom. Um, the, the definition the definition of a flip could be that in the lecturing time, when everyone's sitting together in the lecture hall, maybe it's even a tiered hall with between 30 and 500 people, that the students would actually engage with you and with each other, but you might not know everybody's names, and they don't need to know everybody else's names. And you would put the homework into that lecture hall, the activities and things that you do and questions that you ask. And on the other hand, the lecture delivery would be put into the home time. So that's called flipping a lecture. And I think if I was going to flip a lecture, I would make it a one hour lecture, not a two hour lecture. So if you currently have a two hour slot for your lectures, you might need to reschedule them because it'll be more fun to finish at the one hour mark and say, right, everybody go away to do some more preparation. Student preparation is very important for flipped lectures. So remember them, you're, as a lecturer, you're trying to energize this classroom and you're trying to chase up the students' learning. Now our work in promoting this is really focused on quantitative methods and putting quantitative data into social science classrooms. Rooms. It's funded by the Research and Development Initiative, which is a small grant we've received from the Economic and Social Research Council of the United Kingdom. And um, we have a number of other materials that will help you with flipping your lecture. It's important to use a virtual learning environment, and it might be important to use Camtasia. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how Camtasia, which is a sort of filming method, it can film the material that you've lectured in a previous year. I'm just pressing the start button for it to go. And it, it runs through. I, I'll show you the different sections of this. The Camtasia is actually running and recording the sound of the lecture that I gave last year, or that I gave in a formal but, but without student setting. And I can have the students observe the lecture as the preparation for coming into the classroom. And then when they've observed that lecture, and they've listened to it and worked through it, and ours are actually quite complex lectures, which use SPSS or look at spreadsheets. They have, um, obviously, the usual PowerPoint slides. But we think when the students have to come into a large lecture hall and sit there, after a while they feel bored. We think about 20 minutes is the longest that they want to listen to a lecture. So in the flipped lecture hall, this material would have been studied earlier. I'm just going through. The sound would come through into students with earphones so that they can actually hear the, the Camtasia lecture prior to coming in the lecture hall. And they could actually listen to it on an iPad or listen to it with MP3 as a podcast. But with the, any statistical material, you're going to need to have the visuals, I think, as well. They could do that on an iPhone, even. The other thing, though, is that you have to modify the learning outcomes and make them very explicit. So some of our other materials show how to make the learning outcomes explicit, and that's a job that you do in preparation for going into the classroom. Now I'd like to show you just on this sheet of paper, which is part of a PowerPoint slide that we've made for, for this um, video, I'd like to show you that there's a different schedule for the flipped lecture hall. In one hour, you'd have five minutes of introducing the aims of the hour, 20 minutes of an activity, 10 minutes of discussion or interpretation, and then a series of five-minute segments, very, very energetic, very carefully managed in terms of timing. So five minutes of data interpretation for another graph or another image of a table. Um, five minutes for summing up. And why not conclude with questions and answers? Give them a chance to ask questions. When I sit with a class of 150 people, the one question that someone dares to ask is usually the question that's in everybody's mind. And they're very grateful that someone has stood up and asked a question. So have some time for Q&A. And the, the times planned then might be for six hours work for the student during that week, uh, of which only one hour would be the lecture. They might have a tutorial, they would have follow-up work. And just remember that and the definition of a tutorial is a small group where it might not be me, the lecturer, who's there. It's a, a graduate teaching assistant or a, someone I'm co-teaching with in small groups of 15 or 20. But the lecture hall, flipped lecture, is an activity period 
with um, a lot going on, quite exciting. I've just brought an example to show from this active learning method. I have groups of four in my lecture hall. I say form the group in week one and every week sit with the same people and each group then when they're asked a question or when they're doing an activity they write their joint answer on a, on a flip on, on a card and then I collect in these cards so for 100 people there's only 20 cards or so and I just check through and if I find problems then I can just immediately respond and correct them or I can come back the week after with my corrections and, and you know reinterpretations and we're finding that that's improved their learning it's improved the level of excitement in the classroom and the attendance levels in these lectures so the students feel they're getting value for money so that concludes the video um, don't forget to look at the powerpoints and the documents showing these uh, methods of flipped teaching in more detail thanks <laughs>